If you'd like online business explained to you in a way that you can actually understand, go to latenightim.com forward slash explain. It's completely free and I made it just for you. Now, how about an episode? Episode 207. Late Night Internet Marketing. This week on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast, I'm going to offer you nine simple steps that will help you accomplish your goals in 2021. We're going to keep it simple, make it actionable, and get stuff done this year. All this and more on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. The Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. You've been working for somebody else, but you want a business to run yourself. You want to know how to start and where to begin. Can you get out your comfort zone, my friend? Yes, you can do it right when it's late at night. Casting late at night from a little studio in the big state of Texas. Your host, Mark Mason. Hey, 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 how is everyone doing? I am your host, Mark Mason, coming to you from the little studio in Dallas. I just got off of Clubhouse. I had so much fun. For those of you that aren't familiar with Clubhouse, it's an audio platform, it's exploding on social media. I'm at Mason World on Clubhouse if you want to follow me over there. I was on an affiliate marketing in an affiliate marketing room with Cliff and Pat um, and Ray Edwards, and we were having some good time. We had a couple hundred people in there, I think, at one point. Really fun. If you haven't checked out Clubhouse, it's iOS only right now. And I, I mentioned it uh, last week. And um, you know, if you want to know more about Clubhouse, I reckon I recommend that you go check out Michael Stelzner's articles over on Social Media Examiner. But this episode is something very specific. It's the new year. 2020 was a little crazy. And I think all of us are excited about the possibilities for 2021. Had a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world. A lot of weird stuff in DC this week. Just a lot of nuts stuff. And so I think we're all looking for a direction to go in some some things that will make us feel good about where we're headed. And there's no better way to do that than to set and accomplish some goals. But the question is, how do you do that? How do you really do it effectively? How can you optimize your chances to be successful? I'm going to offer you some very straightforward steps, nine of them, that if you'll follow these nine steps, I personally believe it will dramatically improve the probability that you'll get to the end of this year and you will have actually achieved your goals. It's time to get to work building your internet business one night at a time. time. So without any further ado, let's just get started and say that the very first step is I think we all need to take a deep breath and just accept 2020 for what it was. 2020 maybe was great for you. Maybe it wasn't so great. Maybe you had some things go on in your personal life. Maybe you were directly affected by COVID. Maybe COVID affected your business. Maybe it affected the business of people in your household. Maybe you have friends that became ill. It was a crazy, crazy year. I think we need to accept that for what it was and allow ourselves a little grace. No matter how well we handled it or maybe how poorly we personally handled it, whether we set out to accomplish things in 2020 that just didn't get done because of COVID, or maybe COVID offered these amazing opportunities that we took advantage of, whatever your situation, I think we just need to accept last year for what it was. And to the extent possible, forgive ourselves for having lived through last year where that's appropriate and just put that behind us. I think Standing around and talking about how terrible 2020 was, if that's your situation, doesn't get you anything in 2021. So let's leave that back there. The reason that we don't look backwards is because that's not the direction we're headed. We're headed forwards. So let's look forward 
in 2021. That's my very first step is let's just accept last year for what it was. And then let's take a moment to not just imagine this, this response, this kind of angry or highly motivated response where in 2021, we're going to make up for last year and catch up. Let's don't do it that way. Let's instead choose to imagine sort of where we'd like to be in the next five years. What would you like to be, do, see, have, influence, change over the next five years and give yourself the freedom to really imagine all of the many things that you might want to do. My buddy Cliff Ravenscraft, Mindset Answer Man over at MindsetAnswerMan.com, he has this exercise that he puts people through where he makes them write down 50 things that they want. And, and his instructions are simple. It's like, don't worry about being selfish. Don't worry if it's unrealistic. If you want to own a castle, write down, I want to own a castle. And I encourage you to do that. Take out a legal pad and however many lines are on that legal pad, write down one thing that you want on every line of that legal pad. If you want a new BMW, I want you to write that down. Even if that seems completely selfish or out of reach, if you want a $10 million business, I want you to write that down. And what that will do is it will surface kind of all of these things that you are wanting that are underneath the surface. It'll bring those top of mind. And then with that landscape, we can start to do step three. I want you to pick three things that you want to accomplish in 2021. I don't want you to pick 10. You can certainly pick 10. Some people are going to, they're going to text me. They're going to say, but Mark, I have four things. And you said three, that's fine. Four things is fine. 10 is too many. One is not enough. Usually except in special cases, I, I want you to pick three things. And I think it's really good if those three things aren't all just about your business. I think it's good. Maybe if you have a health thing and a, or a spiritual thing mixed in there. And maybe that gets you to four if if you feel like that has to be the case. But I th- really do think that the magic number is sometime something around three. Now, if you've got some simple goals that are going to obviously be achieved that sound more like habits, like my goal is to take the trash out every week so my wife doesn't have to, that's that's may be incredibly important for your marriage, but that's not the kind of goal that I'm talking about. The kind of goal that I'm talking about is I want to really, I want to release a new product and generate $15,000 worth of revenue, or I want to do, you know, some particular thing with my email list, like triple the number of subscribers by introducing three new lead magnets or whatever your goals are. I want to, um, I want you to come up with three things if you have to have five things, fine. If you, if it's closer to 10, you've got too much. So that's step number three, pick your three things. And then for each thing I want you, and this is the fourth step. I want you to brainstorm why you want to do them. And I think the best way to do this is to take a blank sheet of paper for each goal, write the goal up at the top, and then write down why you want to do this. And so if the why can be things like, what are you running away from? Why, why are you doing this? What is it that you're trying? What does this get you away from? So for example, maybe you want to do something because it's going to keep you from having that sick feeling you have at the end of every month when you don't have any money left in your checking account. You want to get away from that. Or maybe you've got a soul sucking day job that makes you want to, you know, curl up in a ball every Monday morning before you go into work and you want to get away from that job. Or maybe it's a motivation that you're running towards, uh, like your calling in life is to help people and that lights you up and you want a job where most of your time is spent helping other people because that's something you want to move towards. Or maybe you want to pay for your mom's surgery that she needs and she can't afford. And you want to, you want to be able to do that. You're running towards something, some worthwhile goal. I want you to write as many things down on the page as you can. You're going to keep this and I want you to look at it uh, on and off throughout the rest of the year. But it's really important that you understand why you want to do something. If, if you're, if you don't have a good reason 
why you want to do something, I think you could be in trouble when the going gets tough. And so I think this, this step, um, this fourth step of for everything that every goal you want to achieve, having some clear documentation about why you want to do the thing that you want to do is really important. If you want to lose weight, it can't just be because your spouse keeps telling you, you need to lose weight. There's got to be more to it. There's got to be stuff like you want to live long enough to play with your grandkids or whatever it is for you. There's got to be more to it than that. And it's important that you dig down, go get that in this fourth step and write it down so we can use it later. And then for each one of these three goals, I want you to imagine sort of the major steps. Now, you may not know how to do all of these steps, but usually with a large goal, one that's annual, I want you to imagine something around four steps that you need to do. So for example, let's say that you need to, you want to write a book. Well, your big steps might be to decide what the book is going to be about and create a compelling outline based on your research, do the research that you need to do that and get a compelling outline, a strategy for your book. And then your second step might be to actually write the words. And your third step might be to actually get the book published, which includes dealing with the editor and getting the cover design and all that kind of thing. And then your fourth step might be promoting the book. So there's four big steps that you need to take to write a book. Most things you can break down into these kind of four similar sized chunks um, that you can do. And then I think on each one of those goals, now you've got three goals, maybe four or five. If you're persistent, I know how you are. Four or five goals, ideally three goals. And each one of those three goals has four steps. I want you to assign those goals, those steps to quarters for each goal. So maybe you've got three goals. One of them is to publish a book. One of them is to release a course. And one of them is a health goal. Let's say you want to to uh, maintain a certain weight. You want to get back down to a certain weight. And you've got four steps for each. We talked about the book. You First thing you need to do is outline and research the book. Maybe for the course, it's the same thing. You need to outline and research the course. And maybe for the um, for weight loss, you need to identify and uh, what you're eating and start getting on a healthy eating program. And you want to do that immediately and do the research that you need to do to support that. Throw out all the junk food in your house, you know, kind of get yourself on a healthy eating strategy. Those are your first steps for each one of those goals. Well, let's assign those to when we want to do them. And I'd say usually the first step on new annual goals is going to be first quarter. Now, there might be some cases where a big goal, you don't even want to start it until second quarter. But in for each one of these steps, each one of these three big goals, each with four big steps, I want to assign a quarter to them, a quarter of the year. So for example, if you're on in our book example, you've got four steps. If we're going to have that book out there and successful this year, we need to be promoting it in fourth quarter. So we know that our promotion task is going to get assigned to fourth quarter. And before we promote the book, we know that we need to get the book for sale in Amazon or wherever. So we know we're going to be doing the editing, cover creation, and getting the book on the shelves in third quarter. That means we need to write the book in second quarter. And that means we need to get our story straight about what it is that we're writing get the research done and what we're outline, outlining in first quarter. So we're going to break all these things down that way. And so for each one of these major steps for your goals, I want you to assign a quarter to that. And obviously it's going to make more sense for you if you can spread that out during the year. If you jam everything into first quarter, you're not going to be able to get things uh, done in a way that makes sense. So that's step six is assign quarters to each one of the steps that you've, you're going to try and accomplish. Step seven is now let's set everything that's not happening in first quarter aside. We've already decided that these, all of these things, that's if you, if you have three goals, that's nine of your 12 things that you need to go off and do. We're not going to worry about those until April. So let's set them aside 
And let's get focused and make sure that the, the, the three or four major things that we need to get done in fourth quarter get done. And one of the, the technique that I like to use for around this is something that I learned out of a book called the 12 week year. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to say, look, I've got about 12 weeks in first quarter. I want to break down each one of these things into about 12 steps, or at least look at the quarter in 12 increments and say, well, I'm going to work on the book the first six weeks of the quarter, and I'm going to be done by the sixth week of the quarter. So in the last six weeks of the quarter, I can work on outlining my course because I don't want to work on them both at the same time. Or I can say, you know, if I work on my book all the time for six weeks, I'm going to totally burn out. I want to spread that out over these 12 weeks. And so on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to work on my book. And on Wednesdays and Fridays, I'm going to work on my course on average. But whatever I do, I know that in 12 weeks, I'm going to break things down and make sure that they get accomplished. So let's say just for convenience, our book has 10 chapters. So I'm going to say, well, in the first week, I'm just going to kind of come up with the, you know, kind of the structure of the book with the chapters. And I end up with 10 chapters. And then in the second week, I'm going to research the first chapter and I'm going to make sure that I've completely researched and outlined the first chapter at the end of the first second week. And then in the third week, I'm going to outline the second chapter. And no matter what happens, I'm going to make sure that that's done at the end of the second week. And see, by doing this, I'm not focused on this giant behemoth thing, which is publishing a book, which seems completely daunting. I'm just outlining a chapter this week. Well, heck, anybody can do that. So basically what I've done is I've found some goals that are important to me. I've been careful not to choose too many. I've broken those goals down into quarterly steps. I've set aside all of the goal, all of the steps that don't happen this quarter, and I'm just working on the steps that I need to complete this quarter, and I've broken those down into weekly increments. And basically what I'm going to do every Sunday night is I am going to say, okay, what's my goal for this week for this project? What do I absolutely need to get accomplished? And I'm going to do that for each one of my major goals. I'm going to have a goal for the week every Sunday night. And every morning when I wake up, I'm going to ask myself, what action am I specifically going to take to advance that weekly goal? And you know what? If I mess up and I don't get that weekly goal done this week, I don't need to, to beat myself up like I would if I got to, to December and I hadn't published my book. If I don't check in until December and I haven't published my book, now I just didn't get my goal done. But if I just miss a goal for a week, the next week I can work a little harder and catch up because it's just a small increment. So this idea of breaking things down into a weekly increment, super helpful for getting things done and incremental, incrementally solving a giant puzzle like writing a book by just focusing on outlining one little chapter back in January. And if you can develop that habit where every Sunday night you, you define a, a goal for the week that is part of your goal for the quarter, and you get that goal done by looking at it every day and saying, oh yeah, this is the week I'm supposed to outline chapter one. I need to schedule an hour on Wednesday to make sure that I get work on that. And then another hour on Thursday, and then maybe a little time on Saturday after the kids go to bed, because I think that's a three hour task. If you can have that kind of mindset where you're just attacking this weekly goal each day, one day at a time, then you have a real chance of stringing that whole thing together and having a book at the end of the year. So once you've done all that, you know, that's sort of the eighth step is to break those tasks down and do them every week. Um, then the ninth step is simply to pick a, pick a way to organize this. I have a couple of uh, suggestions for you. I use a tool called ClickUp. It's very similar to Asana. You can use Trello. There's all kinds of uh, project managers out there that you can use. Again, I like ClickUp, but you can imagine how nice this breaks down, right? Because it's hierarchical. For each goal, you've got like four big projects inside that goal. And for each project, you've, you've got 12 weeks worth of 
actions that you're trying to accomplish. And each week you might have three or four either calendar appointments or small tasks that you want to try and accomplish. And project management software is perfect for this kind of breakdown. You can assign due dates and all this kind of stuff. And so that's what I recommend that you do. You use a tool like ClickUp or Asana um, to do that. Now you say, but Mark, I don't like all that kind of stuff. I just want to use a spreadsheet. One of the most successful marketers that I know makes millions of dollars every year. And he just has a simple one page spreadsheet where he's got 12 weeks across the top and a list of actions down the bottom, you know, uh, the, the, the columns are the weeks and the rows are the different projects and actions that he's got. And he just maps out his whole quarter in one sheet. And he just checks in that spreadsheet every morning. This doesn't have to be complicated. And alternatively, if you're a pen and paper person, of course, I recommend Michael Hyatt's product, the Full Focus Planner. The Full Focus Planner is awesome. It is specifically designed around this idea of quarters. In fact, each planner is a quarter. And so I think that's another really, really good approach if you're a pen and paper person that wants to carry a journal. So the steps are, again, we want to accept last year. That's the first step. We want to take a moment to imagine not just this year, but sort of the longer range plan in the next five years and maybe even write down 50 things that we would like to have or do or change. And then we want to pick three things, three meaty, substantive, big goals that we want to accomplish in 2021. And the fourth step is for each of these things. We want to brainstorm exactly why we want to do it. And we want to write all that down and keep it and refer to it periodically. The fifth step is to, for each one of those major goals, imagine four steps for each one. Those are going to kind of be the quarterly steps. That's going to give you 12 things to do in 2021. And then we're going to assign which quarters we want to do those in. That's the sixth step. The seventh step is to set everything in quarter two, three, four aside clear your mind and focus on success in first quarter, and then break each one of these big tasks that you've got to do to support your goals in first quarter down into 12 weeks. Cause you've got about 12 weeks to work in each quarter and track all of that in something, whether it's a notebook or click up or a sauna, um, that's what you need to do. Now, I, th- I think a lot of people are interested in this kind of topic around Asana and ClickUp. So next week, I've, I've, I, a buddy of mine happens to be the leading expert on Asana. He's the leading Asana consultant in San Diego or something like that. His name is Brian. He's going to come on the show and talk about the value of project management and what that can do for you. He's an Asana guy, but all of these tools they have the same virtues. Their features are a little different. The user interfaces are a little different, but the idea is the same. He's going to talk about that next week in episode 207. Until then, I hope that you really take the time to plan out 2021 and get things broken down. And the idea is, the promise is, you won't ever wake up and wonder what you should be working on today. Because on Sunday, you will have identified the three major goals for the week. And what you know you need to be doing today is something to advance the state of those three attainable goals this week. That's it. That's the thing. Those are, as Stephen Covey would say, those are the three big rocks that you need to put in your jar first are those three big tasks you identify on Sunday. I hope that's helpful to you. We'll talk to you next week with Brian. Ciao. Listening to the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. Be sure to visit LNIMPodcast.com today to leave feedback for Mark. Download special bonus content, access the show notes, and more. See you there. Until then, go and make some great progress on your internet business one night at a time. One night at a time. I tell you what, I have been having so much fun with my new Mac mini. So I bought an M1 Mac mini because I'm a technology geek. 
Um, I'm a big Apple fan. My day job has me working in the technology sector. And in fact, um, I have a relationship with the fruit based computing company that works, uh, that builds computers. And, um, I, I love everything Apple. I'm like a giant Apple fanboy. And years ago I worked with the company that Apple bought to help them. They bought the talent and the IP from this company to help them design, uh, their processors, including this M1. So for me, it's a little bit personal, uh, in a good way. I mean, I really seeing this thing come to fruition has been amazing. And the performance of this machine is just, I can't believe it. I mean, I, there are just a, an enormous number of videos on YouTube about how great this thing is, but until you actually touch one and actually play with it, it's really hard to believe. And just editing some YouTube videos has been an amazing experience for me because I just, I'm blown away by how how good the performance is on this entry level machine. Now I bought the M one the the entry level M one Mac mini is six ninety nine. I got a little more hard drive space and, and I, instead of eight gig of memory, which is standard, I got 16 gig, which is, that's the most memory you can get. I got a one terabyte hard drive. Hard drive is not a big deal for me because I use a uh, Thunderbolt storage whenever I'm doing video and I think it's a bigger deal for a laptop, but for a, a machine that's not portable, like a Mac mini, you can just hang driver rays off the side of it. So it's not that big a deal, but I got a terabyte that, that ran me a little over a thousand dollars. I can't remember the exact price, but something like that. And it's just been amazing. And I'm, I just have had so much fun. So if you're considering getting a Mac mini and or a Mac with a M1 processor and you're just not sure, or you want to talk to somebody who's not trying to sell you anything, hit me up at feedback at late night. I'd love to answer your Apple questions because I just, I'm so happy. The Mac mini has made me so happy and I think it might make you happy too. Ciao. Late night internet marketing. Hey, it's Mark again. I wanted to tell you one more time about this absolutely free resource that I have for helping people who are trying to get the big picture for internet marketing actually get started and understand what all their choices are. If that's not you, there's no more content. You can skip to the end. But if you're someone who came to this podcast because you're searching for how to get started online and you just can't cut through all the noise, I get it. That was me in 2007, when I was trying to get started, there were so many people throwing offers at me that I really couldn't even understand what all the different business models were. I couldn't understand how money moved around on the internet. And I couldn't really get a grip on what direction I wanted to go in so I could figure out how to move forward. I've created a free video resource for you just for that purpose at latenightim.com forward slash explain. In several short videos, I just explained to you what internet marketing is all about and what online business is all about and the different options that you have for starting an online business. There's nothing to buy there. You just sign up for access and you get the videos just like that. So if that's interesting to you or if you know someone who's in a same situation, send them that link, latenightim.com forward slash explain. And let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what people are thinking that are in the exact same position that I was in more than a decade ago in 2007. In some ways, it seems like yesterday. And in some ways, it seems like an entire lifetime ago. Again, that's late night. I am.com forward slash explain. Late night internet. Mom.